Well, recall that every linear mapping has a unique transformation matrix given an ordered basis. We can interpret linear mappings and their associated transformation matrices as performing an eigen analysis. As we will see, the eigenvalues of a linear mapping will tell us how a special set of vectors, the eigenvectors, are transformed by the linear mapping. Let's let A be a square matrix. Then a real number lambda is called an eigenvalue of A with the corresponding eigenvector x of length n if ax is equal to lambda x for some value lambda in R. This definition of an eigenvalue and an eigenvector, we know that the following statements are equivalent. Lambda is an eigenvalue of A. There exists an x uh, in n-dimensional space with Ax equals lambda x. That can be solved non-trivially. The rank of A minus lambda i is less than n. And the determinant of A minus lambda i is equal to 0. Any two vectors that point in the same direction are called co-directed. If vectors point in the opposite direction, they're called collinear. Now, if x is an eigenvector of a matrix A and has associated uh, eigenvalue lambda, then for any real number C other than 0, it's also true that Cx is an eigenvector of A with the same eigenvalue, which means that the set of eigenvalues, or sorry, set of eigenvectors of A uh, is not unique or at least the set of vectors that are collinear to any eigenvector are also eigenvectors. Now let's consider a real number lambda that's an eigenvalue of a matrix A. Now that lambda is an eigenvalue of A if and only if it's the root of a characteristic polynomial in terms of lambda of A. So the algebraic multiplicity of an eigenvalue lambda is the number of times that it appears as the root of the characteristic polynomial. If A is a square n by n matrix, the set of eigenvectors of A associated with an eigenvalue lambda span a subspace of Rn, which is called the eigenspace of A with respect to lambda, and is denoted E sub lambda. The set of all eigenvectors of A is called the eigenspectrum, or just the spectrum of A. If lambda is an eigenvalue of A, then the corresponding eigenspace, E sub lambda, is the solution space of the homogeneous system of linear equations A minus lambda I times X, equals zero. Geometrically, the eigenvector corresponding to a non-zero eigenvalue path uh, points in the direction that is stretched by the linear mapping. The eigenvalue is the factor by which it's stretched. If the eigenvalue is negative, then that vector is stretched in a negative direction. Some useful properties regarding eigenvalues and eigenvectors include the following. A matrix A and its transpose have the same eigenvalues. However, they don't necessarily have the same eigenvectors. The eigenspace, E sub lambda, is the null space of A minus lambda I. Similar matrices possess the same eigenvalues. Therefore, a linear mapping has eigenvalues that are independent of the choice of basis. 
This makes eigenvalues, together with the determinant and the trace, key characteristic parameters of a linear mapping, as they're all invariant under change of base. And finally, we note that symmetric positive definite matrices always have positive real eigenvalues. Let's consider the following problem. Find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix A, 4, 2, 1, 3. First, we begin by finding the characteristic polynomial. So we're looking at the determinant of 4 minus lambda, 2, 1, 3 minus lambda. Multiplying that out, and then refactoring, we get lambda minus 2 times lambda minus 5 equals 0, or lambda equals 2 or 5. When we go back to our matrix A minus lambda i, with lambda equals 5, we get the matrix negative 1, 2, 1, negative 2. So this tells us that x is equal to 2y. And so E5 is the span of the vector 2, 1. When lambda equals 2, plugging that back into our a minus lambda i matrix, we get the matrix 2, 2, 1, 1. And so here we see that x has to be negative y. So e2 is then the span of the vector negative 1, 1. So these two eigenspaces, e5 and e2 in the example, are one-dimensional, as they were each spanned by a single vector. However, in other cases, we might have multiple identical eigenvalues. And the eigenbases, the eigenspaces, may have more than one dimension. Let's suppose that lambda is an eigenvalue of a square matrix A. The geometric multiplicity of lambda is the number of line linearly independent eigenvectors associated with lambda. In other words, it's the dimensionality of the eigenspace spanned by the vectors associated with lambda. A specific eigenvalue's geometric multiplicity must be at least one because every eigenvalue has at least one associated eigenvector. An eigenvalue's geometric multiplicity cannot exceed its algebraic multi uh, multiplicity, but it may be lower. So let's take as an example the matrix A, 2, 1, 0, 2. And if we compute A minus lambda i and take the determinant, we end up with 2 minus lambda squared equals 0. And so lambda equals 2 twice. So it has algebraic multiplicity 2. However, there's one distinct eigenvalue or eigenvector with that and that's x2 equals 1, 0. And so it has geometric multiplicity of 1. Let's see if we can understand this a little bit better graphically. So in order to get some intuition about determinants, eigenvectors, and eigenvalues, what we've done is we've taken a square, which we've depicted by yellow, green, and blue dots, and we've applied different transformation matrices to these dots. So in the first, the top line, we, uh, we applied matrix A1 to the set of vectors. Now the direction of the two eigenvectors corresponds to the canonical basis in R2, that is, the two cardinal axes. The vertical axis is extended by a factor of 2, and that's the eigenvalue lambda 1 equals 2. The horizontal axis is compressed by a factor of a half. That's the eigenvalue 2, uh, lambda 2 equals a half. The mapping itself, though, is area preserving, right? So the total area of our new picture is still 1, and that's given by the determinant of a equals 1. In our second picture, we're multiplying our vectors by matrix A2. 
This corresponds to a shearing. That is, it shears the points along the horizontal axis to the right, if they're on the positive half of the vertical axis, and to the left if they're on the negative half. This mapping is again area preserving, and so we find that the determinant is 1. The eigenvalue, lambda 1, is equal to lambda 2, which is equal to 1. It's re uh, repeated, eigen, uh, repeated eigenvectors that are collinear, and that's where you see one arrow drawn to the right and one to the left. This indicates the mapping acts only in one direction, along the horizontal axis. For the third mapping, we're going to do a simple rotation. We're going to rotate 30 degrees counterclockwise. Now here, we've got complex eigenvalues. This reflects the mapping is rotation rather than a shear or a stretch. And that's why you don't see any eigenvectors drawn because an eigenvector by its very nature remains unchanged when you apply matrix A to that vector. But since it's a rotation, every vector is gonna be changed. In picture four, we've got our matrix A, one, negative one, negative one, one. That rep represents a mapping in the standard basis that collapses a two-dimensional domain into a one-dimensional domain. Since one eigenvector is zero, one eigenvalue is zero, the space, uh, the space in the direction of the blue eigenvector corresponds to lambda one equals zero. When that collapses, well, the orthogonal red vector stretches the space by a factor of lambda two equals two. This leaves the image with area zero and that's why we get the determinant of A is equal to zero. In our fifth example, we have again a shear and a stretch mapping that shrinks the space by 75%. We see that since the determinant of A is 0.75. It stretches along the blue eigenvector by a factor of 1.5 and compresses along the orthogonal eigenvector by a factor of 0.5. We'll start with the theorem. The eigenvectors x1 through xn of an n by n square matrix A with n distinct eigenvalues are linearly independent. This theorem tells us that the eigenvectors of a matrix with n distinct eigenvalues form a basis in Rn. A square matrix A is defective if it has fewer than n linearly independent eigenvectors. A non-defective matrix A does not necessarily require n distinct eigenvalues, but it does require that the eigenvectors form a basis of Rn. Looking at the eigenspace of a defective matrix, it follows that the sum of the dimensions of the eigenspaces is less than n. Specifically, a defective matrix, matrix has at least one eigenvalue, lambda i, with an algebraic multiplicity m greater than one and a geometric multiplicity of less than m. A defective matrix cannot have n distinct eigenvalues as distinct eigenvalues have linearly independent eigenvectors. And so we come to this theorem. Given a matrix A, that's of size m by n, we can always obtain a symmetric positive semi-definite matrix S if we define S to be A transpose A. If the rank of A is equal to n, then in fact S is symmetric and positive definite. The next theorem is called the spectral theorem. If A 
is an n by n square matrix of real numbers and is symmetric, there exists an orthonormal basis of the corresponding vector space V consisting of eigenvectors of A and each eigenvalue is real. The direct implication of the spectral theorem is that the eigen decomposition of a symmetric matrix A exists with real eigenvalues, and that we can find an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors so that A is equal to PD P inverse, where D is diagonal, and the columns of P contain the eigenvectors. Before we conclude our consideration of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, it's useful to tie these matrix characteristics together with the concepts of determinant and trace. The determinant of a square matrix A is the product of its eigenvalues. That is, the determinant of A is the product of the lambda i's, where the i's of lambda i's are possibly repeated eigenvalues of A. The trace of a square matrix A is the sum of its eigenvalues. That is, the determinant of A is the sum of the lambda i's, where lambda i's are possibly repeated eigenvalues of A. We'll end this video with an example. Consider a matrix A, 3, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 2, 2, 3. It has characteristic polynomial P e of lambda equals negative lambda minus 1 squared lambda minus 7. So it has two eigenvalues, 1 and 7, and 1 is repeated. Now if we take our a minus lambda i equation and plug in lambda equals 1, we actually find that we've got a system of two equations. So E1 spans a set of vectors that are linear combinations of negative 1, 0, uh, sorry, negative 1, 1, 0, and negative 1, 0, 1. Whereas when lambda equals 7, we have the span of the vector 1, 1, 1. Now the spectral theorem tells us that there should be an orthogonal basis here. But this basis isn't orthogonal. However, if we take this basis and use the Graham-Schmidt algorithm, then we could come, come up and find an orthogonal basis. We're going to continue the, these ideas of matrix factorization in the next videos.